In quotes. We had just finished a tour. Robert was in a cast. So I think everybody was homesick. Our attitude was summed up in the lyrics to T for One, said Jimmy Page. The closing song on Presence is above all a reflection of what Robert Plant was feeling at the time. The Led Zeppelin singer had written the lyrics in Malibu shortly before the start of the Munich sessions. In quotes again. I was just sitting in that wheelchair and getting morose. T for One was very personal. I couldn't get back to the woman and children I loved. It was like, is this rock and roll thing really anything at all? Peter Grant would later rave a, that was Maureen's song. T for One was written by Jimmy Page and Robert Plant, and it was recorded at Musicland Studios in Munich, West Germany, 1975, and it comes in at a whopping nine minutes and 27 seconds. That's almost 10 minutes. And coincidentally, that's the exact amount of time that it takes to brew a cup of tea from today's video sponsor. Let's go. is a CBD brand that is based up in Hebden Bridge and it's run by a lovely lady called Kate. And me and Gab were already using their product anyway. I bought her the bath bombs and teas for Christmas and she recently got me the um, muscle recovery CBD massage oil because I have um, trouble with my wrists from all the playing, teaching, editing. And um, since I've been going to the gym, that's been really great as well. But we buy each other the teas for birthday, Christmas, little stocking fillers, things like that. And Kate caught wind of it and got in touch with us and was like, you know, would you like to do um, a partnership? I can send you some product to review for free. And uh, in turn, I can give you a discount code for your subscribers, followers. So we're not getting paid uh, or in a commission, but we are getting sent a product per month for free and we can promote that and share that discount code with you. So if you would like to get 15% off your very first order, then use the code SPEDANDGAB15 at checkout. Have a look at all their wonderful products on their website and score yourself a bargain, courtesy of us too. And also, let us know what you think in the comments. It's tea for one. It's the perfect sponsor. And we were already using them anyway. There's the transparency that you needed. Here's the lovely product and it's delicious. introduction is both weird and wonderful all at the same time. Personally, I think it's polyrhythms. I feel like Paige is playing this repetitive phrase in 9-4. <laughs> And then when Bonham comes in after the first repeat, 
slugging away in 4-4. And they just rotate around each other. King Crimson did this a lot. My old band did this in a few songs. And it kind of happens in Black Dog as well in the verses, that main riff. They start out together and then they kind of like rotate around each other. And the riff that's in the odd time signature will end up kind of going in and out, syncopated. Delivery and the way you hear it and perceive it changes. But eventually the odd number will make its way back around to the one of the 4-4 rhythm again. But when that happens after six repeats, it's a push feel into 6-8, like half time, which is why it drops kind of weird. <laughs> It's like a rug pull. Where you expect it to go, it doesn't. It goes into something else. And then you never hear it again. It's like, did you like that? Here we go. Big classic, fat Jimmy Page Zeppelin riff. Nope. Six, eight, slow moody blues in C minor. Okay, I'll take it. But yeah, that's what makes it weird and wonderful. Let's learn it. Now you could alternate pick everything here, but when you do that, I feel like the direction that you're moving in naturally isn't the way that you want to pick the song. So it gets a bit confusing. So to combat that, what I do is I hammer on um, from the open strings to the first fret right at the start. And right at the very start, you can actually hit the open E and A and hammer on to the first fret. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird, but if you listen to the track, it's, it's there. It's kind of murky, muddy. Then you're going to hit the open G and D on an upstroke the very first time. And then put your third finger on the third fret of the D, second finger on the second fret of the G, and you can strike that down. Go back to the open E and A again, hammer onto the first fret. And then the second time you can pick the B and the G on the upstroke, open. That time it's major third because of the string tuning and then back to the major third on the third fret of the D, second fret of the G. So both together, it's gonna to go like this. And then you've got this riff. So this time we just hammer on the open A to the first fret, pick the open A by itself, and then you're gonna go G, F, G, three, one, three on the low E string. Together, that opening riff is going to go like this. After that, you can kind of simplify. You can just hit the open A and hammer onto the first fret, and then pick the G and the B on the upstroke both times. Listening to the track, it sounds like he's kind of in and out of hitting the um, low E with the A sometimes, the G and B sometimes, the D and G sometimes. Um, I'm not sure if there's a specific order he's doing it in or it's just the kind of like raucous approach is a mix, but it sounds cool and it never happens again. It's gone. <laughs> the intro pushing into that 6-8 section. It's dead simple. You play that same descending riff at the end. And then you hammer on the open A to the first fret as if you go in again. Then hit the open D. And then fifth fret of the D string with the third finger, the note G. Arch over because you're going to bar the top three strings flat, third fret, to get that G minor. You kind of swing into it. 
and then a rake upwards. And then what I do is I just hit the root note, down, down, up, down, up, and give it a slight swing. Then you're going to move everything up one fret. Put your second finger on the fifth fret of the G and pinky on the sixth fret of the B. What you've got here is basically an F minor chord with an extra minor third in the bass. If I move that to open position and play D minor and move it up, E minor, F minor. If I put that extra minor third in the bass and still fret the chord, you get that sound. So from that G minor, the picking pattern on the F minor, I'm going D right through to the high E and I hit that twice. Then come back to the D and then the B. Slide that whole thing up two frets. And as long as you've kept that bar on, when you take the pinky off, that then becomes a B flat. Major chord. You have to take the pinky off though. After you've strummed that once, you're then gonna pinch, or you can hybrid pick, but I prefer to pinch, the G and the high E string. Come up a fret to the 8th fret now, add the 3rd finger to the 8th fret of the high E, pinch that, and then slide up 2 frets, and pinch twice. So strum that B flat, and then pinch as you ascend. Quickly plant the index finger across the top two strings on the 8th fret. You're going to pick them together and then hammer on pull off the 3rd finger on the 10th fret. Now there's a little kind of cool lick here where he's sliding some double stops from the 10th fret of the G and the 9th fret of the B up a tone to 12 and 11. And you can slide into it a couple of times and then back. And then hammer on from the 8th fret of the G to the 10 and back. You could keep that second finger planted if you want. Have fun. And then I think he actually does hit the G and the B strings just on the 8th fret. But it's very delicate and it's supposed to be um, intimate, so play around with it. It doesn't have to be precise. From here... So over that intro, you've got some really cool harmonizing guitar lines that come in. And the way I've mapped it out is you've got the intro riff by itself once, the drums come in for two repeats, and then the left harmonizing guitar line comes in for one repeat, and then the right one joins in for two more, and then you're done. It's a good way to think about it. So um, like musical markers or reference points, so you can gauge where you're at. Here's the first one. So these lines are very choppy staccato, so we're going to be bringing our pick back down 
each time to touch the string, kill it dead. It's a good technique to have in the bag. Start with your second finger on the seventh fret of the G, hit that once, then hit the eighth fret of the B with the third finger, bend it up, touch the string like I've done here, so you kill the note dead, and then pick it again for the pre-bend release. Then come back to the sixth fret of the B with the index finger. Do the exact same thing again, but you just leave off that seven. So eighth fret, bend up, pre-bend release, back to the six. Then we have this. So that's seven, five on the G, and then five, seven on the D, and then five, seven on the G. But notice that I'm using second finger here on the way back up because I'm going to need that third finger very quickly to go back to the eighth fret of the B for those bends. So you could use third, but I think that that jump is a bit pointless, so you might as well use a different finger on the way up. Which makes it easier. On the final repeat, which will be three in total, won't it? So the third repeat of that riff, you're going to change the ending to this. So this time you can just walk up 5757 five, seven, index third. Then you're going to go to index finger on the sixth fret of the B, go back and forth between the seven on the G, and then slide to that eighth fret. All together like this. Here are the notes for the other harmony. Now, notice I said notes, because you could play it like that, and that would be right, but it doesn't match the styling of the first one. So, I like to play it like this. Third finger on the 11th fret of the B, hit it and then bend it up and chop back down with the pick. Then you're gonna to go to the eighth fret of the B with the index finger and then hit the 10 with the third. Because the other guitar line has got that cool little bend in it. I figured you might as well have the same sort of delivery for this one as well. Now, as we mentioned, this song is 9 minutes 27 seconds long, and it's absolutely laced to the brim, if you can even lace things to the brim, with awesome moody blues licks in C minor. And I think we can all agree that there's far too many for me to go through one by one. I think that would be too much, and I don't think it's the point of the song. I think the point is to express yourself and have fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of the scales that you can be using in C minor, and I would encourage you to work out your own really cool licks, or try and get into the mindset of Jimmy and figure out what he's doing. I could go through and work every single one out, we know that, that's what I do, but let's try something different. So, first scale I'm going to talk about is the C pentatonic minor scale, starting here, eighth fret of the low E. That would be a great place to start. You can craft infinite numbers of awesome licks in that position. Albeit that would probably be far too much for this song. If you would like a more in-depth lesson on the pentatonic minor scale, check out this video up here where I show you 
how to play it across the entire fretboard. Now if you want to expand that pentatonic minor scale, we can add something called the flat 5 into it, the blues note, and that's going to give us the C blues scale. C to G, 8th fret of the E to 10th fret of the A, is a perfect fifth. So that must mean if we flatten it, we get a flat 5. And you can hear when you use it in passing, it adds that really cool, cheeky blues flavour. You can do it in the second octave as well. Adding that note in passing to your phrases is going to sound really cool. You can also do some little cheeky semitone bends as well. You can run through it with hammer-ons and pull-offs like I was doing. You could quickly slide in and out of it. Get your crisp book on. One thing that you're going to hear a lot throughout is the C natural minor scale or the Aeolian modal scale. And that adds two extra notes into the pentatonic minor scale. And that is the major second and the minor sixth. So when we add those extra two notes in, you should be able to see that the major second is only a semitone below the minor third, and the minor sixth is a semitone above the perfect fifth. You can already hear that by adding them in, the semitones are creating this darker mood, which is going to help you um, express yourself more and create really cool dark sounding lines in your um, improvisation. And it will also help you figure out Jimmy stuff as well, because if you think, oh, well, I only know the blues or the pentatonic scale, I can't figure out that note. This should help you explore. Too much, too fancy, too many notes. Jimmy would not approve. My hair's fallen out as well. That's what happens when you get to 23. Right, let's talk about some of the other parts. I made some actual notes, which I'm going to put on Patreon with the tab. Um, but for the main part of it, it's just a big, fat, slow, moody blues. C minor 7, moving up to this like little... F inversion and then F minor 7, G minor 7, B flat, and then kind of repeating that little um, pinched ascending riff from the intro. And then you've got the chorus, which is B flat 5 to C5 power chords, E flat 5 to F5. So what I'm thinking of doing is just playing through a rotation of the verse now so you can see how it moves around, and then I'll actually show you um, the power chord chorus part with that cool little riff in there as well.
hopefully that gives you some idea of how to cycle that section around and try and copy it, like I said. But if you do need the extra help, you can grab the tab for this lesson on my Patreon. Now let's take a slightly more in-depth look at the um, kind of dramatic opening up that chorus section. Now this section is dead simple. You've got a couple of different power chord alterations and then a really cool repetitive riff in the middle. So we start first fret of the A string, B flat, hit it once, move up a tone to C, and then kind of slide out. Wait. Then this riff. Third fret of the G, then fifth fret. 3rd fret of the D, then 5th fret, 1st fret of the D. Chords again. Zip all the way up to E flat on the 6th fret of the A, and then move up a tone to F. Wait. Riff. Back to B flat and C. Riff. Now you kind of jump back into um, what we were doing in the verse. So you've got that F minor 7 up to G minor 7. Back down to F minor 7 to the B flat major, and then pinch that riff. And that puts you back at the C minor seven again. And that's pretty much it. You've got a really, as we called it, weird and wonderful intro um, with this nice little ascending chord pattern after it, which leads us into the main body of the song, which is that slow moody blues, moving around C minor seven, F minor seven, G minor seven, B flat. And then um, you've got the kind of big power chord section where it opens up and that riff. And then there's all the lead stuff, but as we talked about, I've given you the key, the scales, if you want other positions of them or more in-depth learning materials, you can check out my Patreon or the link to the Master the Pentatonic Scale, Master the Blue Scale. I've got a lesson on modes in my music theory playlist, loads of stuff. And if you dive into that and you understand it, you're gonna be way more um, self-sufficient and you'll build that musical uh, freedom to just explore and have fun. Speaking of having fun, if you did have fun and you enjoyed today's lesson, please thumb up the video, hit subscribe if you've not already. You should have done. Come on, you've had enough warnings. Hit the little bell next to it to be notified the next time we're doing one of these. And uh, drop a comment down below, tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, but mostly what you liked. And also, while I'm having a brew, tea for one, obviously. Still warm. We must have been efficient with our teaching today. Don't forget to go and check out the tonic in Hebden Bridge. You don't have to go in person, but that's where they're based, but you can check them out using the link in the description. And remember, if you do want to snag yourself 15% off your very first order, your first order only though, don't be greedy, 
But yeah, use the code SPEDANDGAB15 and that will score you a big fat 15% off whatever you want. Get me some it. Stick it in the post. I actually wanted the code to just be SPED15, but um, Gab had to muscle in on it and uh, make it a joint thing. She's like that. Don't tell her that I said that though, because maybe next time it'll just be Gab15 and all my stuff will be on the drive. Right, I've got to go now because Gab overheard what I said and I'm in trouble. Take it easy. I'll see you soon.